guys everything fish finally bringing you another episode of native fish care and today I'm gonna be doing the red side dace which is these guys right here so let's get into it scientific name is Clinostomus elongatus no other common names family is Saprinidae which is the minnow and carp family Origin, according to the USGS, is the Upper Susquehanna Drainage, New York and Pennsylvania, Great Lakes except Lake Superior, and the Mississippi River Basins from New York and Southern Ontario to Minnesota and south to West Virginia, Northern Kentucky, Indiana, Wisconsin, and Iowa. Page and Burr, 1991. This fish was originally described by Page and Burr in 1991, so it's a somewhat recent discovered fish. Tank size would be 15 gallon for 6 to 8 adults and maybe like one small bottom dweller like a mad tom. But if you want to keep them in a community I'd try to get at least a 36 inch or 3 foot long tank or something like a 30 long to keep them in a community setting. I have my 3 in with 3 silver jaw minnows and 2 bluefin killifish and a 20 tall but these guys are going to be upgraded, well everything in here is actually going to be upgraded to a 75 gallon soon except the killifish. Max size for these guys is about 3 to 5 inches. Mine are all 3.5 to 4 inches now. And as they get older you might actually be able to see on that one. This is I believe a male right here. It's definitely got the most prominent of the three. You can actually see they get kipes which is an upturned jaw, it's got like a little hook on it, it's often referred to as a hook jaw. Yeah, they're literally the only minnows I can think of that naturally get a kipe, at least that I know of. The only other fish I can even think of that get kipe are trout and salmon. So it's pretty dang cool looking. The first time I found one I thought it was a salmon fry, because of that jaw and the color, beautiful coloration. My guys actually aren't too colored up right now, but... When they get in their good moods, they'll get really red with black speckles on them. And sometimes my male will just go all black. It's a beautiful fish. Temperament is peaceful, although you can kind of tell by the way they're swimming around. They are boisterous fish. They are aggressive feeders while they are peaceful. So they can out-compete other fish for food. Just be careful when you're keeping them in communities that your other fish get food. I would say moderate experience for these guys. They're not too, too hardy. They are skittish, and they can jump out of tanks if they're not 100% covered. These guys are big jumpers. Water temperature should also never exceed 75. If they do, you have a decent chance of getting fatalities. My temperature in here right now looking is about 66. It's the winter too, so... In the summer, it would probably go up to 72. pH range, ideally 7 to 8. They could probably take down to 6.5, but I wouldn't go lower than that. So, alkaline water. Slightly. Neutral to slightly alkaline, I should say. Activity level, as you can see, very active minnows. Feed voraciously, and they will actually learn to beg for food. Mine just ate, so they probably aren't going to beg. I probably should have waited until after to feed them so they would beg in the video but I wanted to get them a little bit colored up and they seldom just stop moving at all they're constantly swimming it's going to be hard to get a thumbnail picture for these guys because they're moving so much but let's see best tank mates would be other peaceful North American native fish that can compete with them for food so you can keep darters and chiners and other dace and minnows with them, but not always, but just sometimes be prepared. You might have to target feed some of your fish. My silver jaws in here had a hard time getting food at first, but they adapted pretty quick, so they're coming up to the top to eat now, too. For decor, just scape their tank like you would see a natural stream in North America, so... Gravel or sand bottom with some larger rocks arranged in piles. And maybe a piece of driftwood. I don't have driftwood in them now, but when I upgrade, I'm going to. 
you can have plants with them. I've kept these guys with plants before, back when this was a planted tank, before I had a cyanobacteria outbreak, but you don't need to. They do like to hide in them, though. I've noticed. Uh, you want to get at least a little bit of flow, so I wouldn't just recommend the hang on back filter unless you have it modified for increased flow, because these are riffle inhabiting fish in pools, so. I would go either a sponge filter, which is causing surface disturbance, or a power head. I'm going to have both when I upgrade them. So yeah, red side dace are very active, native minnows that do well, and add a splash of color to native communities. Again, it's ironic, this is the most colored up they are for the video, but they will get bright red, I don't even know if neon red's a thing, but they get kind of a neon red with black speckles, and my male will turn like jet black sometimes. They are really active feeders, learn to beg for food, and just make sure their tank mates are eating enough. Oh, there's that one yard, you could probably see it's kite. And one last thing I should say is you do want to keep these things in moderately sized schools. I would go at least five to six fish. I only have three in here because I don't want to overstock this tank. It's only a 20 tall. But as soon as I do get my 75 up and running, I'm, I've been going out trying to collect some more of these guys, but it's so cold now it's hard to find fish without freezing. Fall under ice twice this year, so... Well, not under it, but into it, so that wasn't too fun. My male might be getting... Yeah, he's starting to get some speckles on him there. The video. Good. So, yeah. Awesome, awesome fish. And... Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about them. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys want to keep these now after seeing how awesome they are. And I will see you next time.